Today is October 18th. It's Friday, so it's nonsense and robots, which is like the two best categories. And it's so sunny outside. Is it? I haven't really been out much today. It's a very pleasant day. Yeah. It's like we're actually getting a, just a little tiny bit of fall. Before it gets, you know, brutally cold in like but then, a week. What, wasn't there a blizzard in the Midwest somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've got like a ton of snow. And so a, much for growing food this year. I think an early frost destroyed all the potatoes somewhere. So, yeah. Dark times. But let's not think about that. Let's think about robots instead. And let's get excited because those driverless cars, no, really. No, totally driverless. This time. No humans at all except for the cattle in the back seat. <laughs> we want customers. Completely driverless Waymo cars are on the way. Right now, the Waymo cars have a human uh, helper pilot, I guess. But soon, the next generation of Waymo is going to be driverless with just an employee in the car. And then after that, presumably, no employee in the car. No, I think the no employee is what they've announced. Yeah, that's what they announced, at least in the email. Yeah. But that's not that's, that's a ways away. No, it's like real soon. Yeah, not with, that's not what the email said. <laughs> We'll see. It's the Phoenix people. They're like, hey, don't get freaked out because the cars are going to start showing up empty. We'll see. But it is in that one suburb where all the roads are perfect. and they're Yeah, everything's a, straight and flat. perfect grid. So mm. we talk about robots taking jobs. And, of course, the transportation industry is the obvious one, right? I mean, self-driving trucks, self-driving cars. It seems kind of terrifying. And you also think of things like food service and stuff like that. We think of robots physically doing a thing, but it turns out that is not the industry that is being most dis disrupted. And it's kind of surprising the one that it is. Goliath is winning. The biggest US banks are set to automate away 200,000 jobs. Turns out banking and finance does employ a lot of people. It requires a lot of people to go over those mortgage things, make sure people aren't committing fraud. It's like, oh, clearly this guy's a drug dealer because of all the cash that he deposits. We need to report that. Yeah, that, that's going to be all automated now. They're saying that <clears throat> kiosks in the bank branches and better ATMs are going to make your bank teller pretty much extinct. I think that, like, they've got a picture of Wells Fargo here. It's like Wells Fargo and Chase and some of those other companies. They may actually be upended by more modern finance companies because, like, all the little games they like to play with, like, fees and overdraft and, like, reordering the transactions. One thing that all of this automation and technology does is make it to where, like, a small bank could actually compete with a huge bank if they don't do the same kind of shenanigans with their well, app. Not only that, but once you eliminate all the humans at the branch... Why not just bank entirely online? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're going to trust a soulless money market account, one's as good as the next, right? <laughs> as long I, as you're uh, FDIC. And if you got more than, is it 100 grand or 200 now? They've upped it up during the uh, oh, yeah, financial they're... crisis. I think it came back down to 100. Hmm. But just spread it out, unless you're really rich. And then, you know, I got no <laughs> sympathy for you. Just deal with it. <laughs> if you're really rich, they're going to find a way to take your money anyway. Krista, you're a Pinterest girl, right? I used to be. I don't really use it anymore. Well, during the time when you did use it, how often did you feel the need to self-harm? Almost constantly. <laughs> Just, it was overwhelming. You know, you'd see this cute idea for like fall decor for your home and then it was like, cut your wrists. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, do they make like exciting collages of how to hurt yourself? I, don't, I know. It, so Pinterest, like, it follows what you look up and, like, it'll suggest things based on things you've looked up before. So I never saw any of this, but I guess it's a problem. I don't I know. I don't know. I, I had trouble imagining what it is. Pinterest says AI reduced reported self-harm content by 88%. I think that's kind of like how Google's bots reduced monetizable content on YouTube by 88%. Well, it could be, too. So Pinterest, it's typically, like, home decor and, like, fashion and stuff like that. I wonder if, um, I know Tumblr had this problem for a while. If it was like Thinspiration blogs where like <laughs> girls who were anorexic would post stuff like that. And it's like, this is goals. And it would just be someone unhealthily skinny. Like, so very, it's not like a GIF on how to braid an organic noose. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. It was probably something like the Thinspiration blogs, but. Pure uh, ethically harvested sheep's wool. <laughs> for your news. news. <laughs> uh, 
I guess that's a good thing. It's Use another, different color threads. Another thing that AI can do that would probably be unpleasant for a person to do. Yeah. Oh, this is this is another dark timeline story. But the, you might the Kafka esque like, context for it. But anyway. So the headline, what do we want? To, I don't know. Uh, a RoboCop, a park, and a fight. How expectations about robots are chasing with reality. Clashing. This, uh, clashing. Chasing. Cla- oh, yeah, I can't see. My You're glasses the are dirty. Here. Yeah, it is. Well, it's hard to read with this stupid thing. I actually could read this article. I, had some I didn't get this pop-up. I had some basement water drop on my glasses, so now there's like a... Uh, hard anyway. water stain. Not yeah. Basement water, not even once. <laughs> anyway, there's, there's this park that has a, a robot cone... It like sucks a, we can't show a picture. It's, yeah, it's the a, picture is really nice. We have you remember the robot that fell in the fountain? It's that guy. It looks like the things He's from back uh, on patrol from the the Euro show that I don't watch. The Doctor, Doctor Who, Who yeah, the Dalek. Daleks or whatever. It looks like those things. It's the the Dalek Sands Plunger, then, if you will. Um, so there was a lady that was assaulted, and so the thing was rolling by, and she ran up to it and no, was, it was like, a, it, it was, was like a bystander a, who saw a fight, an onlooker. Oh, okay. yeah, and she saw the robot had a button. That was like a 911 button. Yeah. So they, they pressed the button and it called, not the police, but the robot company. And they were like, no, no. And then the robot played a little tune and drove away. No, they didn't answer. It didn't. Yeah, no one answered. All it said oh. was, please move aside, citizen. Oh, I guess it called the company. But it didn't. It, it, didn't, but it, it did, was a Saturday. Yeah, but it did play a song and left. Yeah, apparently well, it, it like plays a song all the time. It, it plays that song all day long, mm. which is kind of like it's little, you know, I'm a cop song. <laughs> so the, the woman pointed out that, like... <laughs> the robot kept rolling as she was jamming the 911 button. It was just like, please move. move. aside. <laughs> so they were, they called the cops, and the cops came. They used a phone. Uh, what a world where we need a robot when everybody has a phone in their pocket. And during the time that the cops were there taking statements and stuff, the robot just stupidly kept circling. <laughs> well, and it was funny because like, they were talking about it, and they're like, we don't actually say what the robot does on the robot. Because we don't want people to think that it actually is capable of doing anything. <laughs> now, I said they are going to eventually route that to the cops, but they're paying seventy to eighty thousand dollars for a robot that just wanders around the park and doesn't do anything. It wanders around the park twenty-four hours a day. Now it does do something, Krista. It records video and audio of everybody <laughs> who's in the park. Uh, yeah. People were saying, like, I feel safer with my kids there. And I was like... Yeah, this this article talks about, like, you know, uh, the taco truck driver who said that, oh, people feel better having this around. They feel like it's more safe. And it's like... Mm-hmm. Is it, though? Like, even if... Okay, so, yes, it, it's recording. Yes, it can call the cops. But, like, it's not going to stop anything from happening. Like, yeah. But if you happen to be an undocumented migrant and you run through the park and the cops search facial recognition for your face... <laughs> then that could be useful to them. If it's not going to make any people If you're meeting in the someone park. up on the Facebook marketplace with your piñata. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it's, no, it's not going to help any back. of the park goers, but it might help the authoritarian regime. And that's what's important. <laughs> the story was sad and... That was weird. Terrifying and confusing, but this guy, I, you got to say, he seemed super excited about it, which is weird. Terminally ill scientist is about to transform into the world's first full cyborg. Uh, Peter Scott Morgan, 61, was diagnosed with motor neuron disease about two years ago. Uh, But instead of, you know, being sad about it, here's the picture where he's going to have his larynx removed because he loses control of, like, how he swallows and how he speaks. So there's a chance saliva could go go in his lungs and then he gets pneumonia. So they're just going to go ahead and eliminate that. And then there's this is his... Like super space age chair. Now he uh, has so there's a camera here, and he uses facial recognition to control the chair entirely. Is it just just his eyes? I think. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that's how he wanted to do it. Yeah. That's all he can dependably use. Now the really creepy part is his weird boy band face. (laughs) Yeah, he wants to upload his brain. Like eventually to survive to beat death, he wants to. Get his brain in something else somehow. But his face will eventually, like, the muscles will start to atrophy. So, like, they went on and did a 3D model. Yeah. That doesn't look particularly accurate to me, but maybe, well, maybe this was it's probably, a prototype. This was probably before he lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. This, yeah. this says like, that they modeled it before. Yeah. Look how skinny he is here. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think that's when he had full musculature. 
And uh, yeah, and he wants to like try to offload his brain. It wasn't clear exactly. Oh, that's a pretty good match. That's from before, the before times. That's the 1.0 version. Listen, Krista, when you make your a your avatar for your cyborg, you're going to make it hot, as hot as you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why accept your imperfections in the cyborg world? Think like Weird Al versus Weird Al as Conan the Librarian from UHF. Yes. Yeah, that's something that everybody can relate to. <laughs> yeah, it's, mm, that's a really weirdly specific reference. <laughs> so anyway, this guy is uh, super excited about abandoning his body, which is failing him, and becoming fully cybernetic. Although it's probably it not, seem not like quite as fully cybernetic. Uh, it, it occurred to me as hilarious because uh, this the picture here is... Uh, that's his husband. So they're a married gay couple. And you got to think that futuristic gay cyborgs have to be the most terrifying thing in the world to like the Fox News generation. Right? <laughs> it's like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. It's a slippery slope. <laughs> I think the Saturday Night Live skit, I had it best with, uh, you know, every old person knows that uh, robots run on old people's medicine. So you need to get old glory robot insurance. <laughs> and they didn't even know they were going to be gay. Yeah. <laughs> gymnastics did young Krista ever have an interest in gymnastics no I was not good at it I had some friends who were in gymnastics and I would like go to their practices with them and like try to do the balance beam and I was not good at it mm. did you ever dream of being on the Olympic stage I didn't dream of ever doing anything sports related okay. I played softball for a few years and I was very bad at it I bet you were a right fielder no, I was I was like they put me as far out in the outfield as they could because I just watched the ducks. That, that's I as didn't far care. As you can get. <laughs> yeah, I too had problems paying attention. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, gymnastics. It's very subjective, right? It's scored based on what the judges think, but apparently that's not good enough. Computer assisted judging is being tested at gymnastics world championships. So it looks like the computers are modeling the ideal motions that the gymnast goes through in order to see how on form and how symmetrical they are <laughs> that seems insane like if you watch olympic videos from like the 1950s versus what's happening today it's incredible so, i'm sorry young lady uh your 20 year trip from childhood to your <laughs> one chance at the olympics is uh we're gonna have to take a point off your score because you were one degree off <laughs> with the, the bend of your leg there now, you say they, uh, the modeling, yeah, you have to submit to modeling your entire body before you go into <laughs> Olympic gymnastics. How long before they wear a tracker suit? I wonder if we'll see like Andy Serkis competing. Uh, in what about those little balls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, when they do the, the motion capture. That'd be cool. Uh, that's a two for one thing because they could do the balls for motion capture, but then they could also uh, substitute what clothes the gymnast is wearing according to you know whoever paid the most ad dollars. <laughs> so like if Coke wants to take out ads, it could be like you know she could be wearing a dress like a Coke, and it would it would have realistic physics because you're tracking the little balls. And you could when you're watching on your smart TV for ninety nine cents, you could buy different outfits. Oh yeah, and put oh on the gymnast. exciting! Truly yeah. the darkest timeline. <laughs> Drink verification can. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of the darkest timeline, Disney classics. Remember back when Disney made actual cartoons and like actually animated them, and that was the best ones because that's when I was a kid. Well, <laughs> we forever lost those days. But the bad thing about those days was the darkness that was hiding in those movie scripts. We didn't even know it. We're too stupid to know. But now we will be protected. Thanks to the computers. The Nine News reports that artificial intelligence technology is going to review Disney scripts for gender bias. This is going forward, but they've got a picture of Ariel, of course. I'm I'm looking forward to the the timeline where like Wally is banned for like fat shaming because that's just so ridiculous. I uh, I don't understand how an AI could understand the nuance of this. Like, <laughs> well, it's you know not, what I mean. I don't think it's going to be that uh, particularly advanced. They talked about, uh, so male and female characters, which, can we really assign that these days? Well, they they kind of talk about well, that. Well, and like, how does a movie like Mulan rank? Because that whole movie is like tearing apart like the trope of like the good, well, beautiful daughter. But, and then she like dresses up like a man. Like, how does that score? But they talk about um, like lines, right? 
how many men have speaking lines versus how many women have speaking lines? Is there an overwhelming ba imbalance in that? Although, what if, what if you have a movie that's based in like World War Two? Have we seen what happens with that in video games? Do we have to gender bend and like the video games get really <laughs> weird? Or more cynically, like what if your your movie is you know catering to a young female audience? Like, yeah. wouldn't that be better if your female characters had more lines? Like. Or vice versa, if it's like a, a movie that's geared more toward boys. Like, do, do you think there's still surveillance footage of when when movies like Amelie came out in theaters? It's just like twelve year old girls and like really greasy thirty five year old and older dudes just in the audience together with nobody in between. That would be really weird. Yeah, I think there's still a lot of that. I mean, My Little Pony, uh. <laughs> the same demographic. Uh. <laughs> So uh, we talk about self-driving cars like the Waymo, and uh, it's interesting that even when you watch those Tesla videos, the car still makes the movements, like the steering wheel moves and the pedals move, like it's actually actuating the controls. Because we're still sort of in that paradigm of like, no, it can drive itself, but this is still a car as we, we think of it. And this company says, we don't need any of that. There's no reason put a human in this car. Scania AXL? Is that how you pronounce Scania that? Scania or Scania? I'm not I sure. A fully autonomous concept truck without a cab. It's all robot. Look at it. Krista, rate it. I So I looked at these pictures and, and I was like, it looks too clean. Like, especially for the environment it's in, it feels like, it almost feels like it's photoshopped <laughs> in. Like They probably put those gravel in it and then washed it again. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's how it looks. Is this some dude trying to get startup money? Is that what this is? Well, I think they're already, this company's already doing some autonomous stuff, but this is a, an experimental model. And I guess it makes sense, you know? I feel like if this was a toy truck, it'd be very popular with my three-year-olds. <laughs> they would really like it. But what if the, what if the, the truck works, but the AI component breaks down? How do you drive it back? <laughs> Manual remote control. I guess. That'd be really cool. Well, I guess you could like plug something into it and sit on top of it there. <laughs> yeah, OSHA would not be approving of that. Oh, this is Australia, though. Whatever their version of OSHA is. So, eh, I don't know. It looks cool. I like the look of it. Yeah, it is pretty. I like the color. Although, like, is that a cut right there? Is that a style cut? Yeah, it looks like they've done like a very... I it mean, looks like the fractal meshify case yeah, on the side much, of a truck. But how much dust is going to get in these lines? Yeah, it's just it's going to be a mess. Maybe it, maybe this can tip back. I don't know. More automation. We talked about uh, you know the Hong Kong protest and Overwatch and all that stuff, and Krista's not committing to it because she hates the people of Hong Kong. <laughs> but Krista, will you get behind? The reinvention of May. Yeah, because I like the memes. Protesters are trying to get Overwatch banned in China using memes of popular hero May. Did they, this didn't show a lot of pictures, did it, in this article? May, Scroll down some. May is one of the characters from Overwatch that And she's can play. Chinese. Yeah. And one of her, so this is funny when you play the game, one of her opening lines is, uh, the world's worth fighting for. <laughs> Surprised they haven't cut that out yet. I think they might have enhanced her uh, bust a bit. In Just a one. little. There was one that was really good that was like using her in-game model. That's it. Or that's actually from one of the shorts where they put the, the mask over. It's quite convincing. Oh, look, they even did Snowball, her little robot. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, these memes are great. They are, they're really good. I mean, this one's low quality. <laughs> yeah. But I still like it. So, yeah. May is now a symbol of independence. They're trying to get Overwatch banned in China. It'll pro they'll probably succeed because there have been a, a bunch of other things yeah. that have been banned in China over at less. You know what I want to see? I want to see some uh, May Pepe collaboration memes. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing to have a hacked version of Overwatch where Pepe was a playable character? Well, why couldn't the little floaty thing be Pepe? <laughs> some people, so they have like new workshop stuff where you can do, a, I don't know if anyone's done custom models yet for the workshop stuff. But maybe that's coming. Here on Earth, we like to measure accomplishments by money, right? The more money you got, the more respect you get down here. But out there in the, the rest of the solar system, it's all about moons. <laughs> Who's got the most? 
Saturn has overtaken Jupiter to host the uh, to host as, as host as host to most moons in solar system. God, I can't read today. What's wrong with me? The gas giant has 82 moons, surpassing the 79 known to orbit its larger neighbor. Jupiter's really having a rough year. Like the <laughs> the big red dot is also like they say it's becoming less intense, and now this. Uh, it's, well, it's a bad time to be a Jupiter. It, the dot is probably its self-confidence. And it was like, I know you've got more moons, and soon everybody will know. <laughs> this is the Guardian. So, rip Jupiter. Poor Jupiter. Maybe if you tried harder, you'd have more moons. Boys go there to get more stupider. <laughs> what? You didn't, you didn't do that, like, mm-hmm. playground taunt? No. You go to Mars to get more candy bars, and then... Whoever your adversary is goes to the Jupiter to get more stupider. That sounds like something a marketing agency would come up with. It was popular in the, uh, in the 90s when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm sure the marketing agencies are focusing a lot on the playground <laughs> dollar. Yeah. We will sell more Mars bars. <laughs> get on this. Can you buy Mars bars anymore? <laughs> I couldn't buy them when I was a kid. I used to get confused when I'd see references to them in books. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I was like, what's I a Mars I thought they bar? were available in those days. I don't remember them. You can still get them at Cracker Barrel. Oh, can you? Yeah, I bet you can other places too. Well, you know, we talk a lot a lot about uh, the apocalypse because it seems er, it's funny because I, I read a thing about how every human culture, even when, before we met each other, we all have one thing in common: we've all predicted the end of the world. <laughs> so maybe it's not as bad as we think. Maybe it's just you know part of our human nature to expect the end of things, but. It's fun to think about, you know, games like Fallout. And you got to ask yourself, if you love technology, what's a world without that going to look like? And one guy is working toward uh, preserving it. Collapse OS is an open source operating system for the post-apocalypse. The operating system is designed to work with ubiquitous, easy to scavenge components in a future where consumer electronics are a thing of the past. So right now, the operating system is not targeting even really desktop computers, but like the embedded processors that are in like basically everything. Because after some sort of collapse, I mean, it seems like if there's a massive reduction reduction in population, we would probably be able to you know use regular computers. But maybe something will break and you have to like reprogram the microcontroller. Not if it's nuclear. Uh, that's what this does. The only thing I could think about reading this story was like, man, I can't wait to shoot this guy and steal his resources. <laughs> <laughs> but this really isn't a computer in the way that we think of it. It's just a programmer for these chips. And he points out that he used this one of the simplest and most common chips that you could get out of like uh, um, cash cashier. What's the word that I'm thinking of? Uh, I can't Point of sale machines. Registers. Cash <laughs> registers. Uh, wow. The Sega Genesis ran this chip. Uh, calculators, several calculators have it, and a lot of non computer electronics. So you'll be able to get in there and pull that chip out and actually program it using his system. I don't know what you run his system on. I guess you have a computer. Yeah, I don't. This is. Okay. Like, that's just. But how it I makes sense. Like, it. what if you had the one computer? And people could bring their scrap to you and you could return them working microcontrollers. Or I go in there with a gun. Or he's desperate for food. (laughs) (laughs) It depends on how far society collapses. Society collapses, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, this might be good for like three years in. (laughs) When you've settled. Can you imagine though if something happens to like the world chip fabrication? So you like you got Intel, TSMC, and Samsung. Those are gone. But then a lot of universities have microchip fabrication facilities and is there a world where like you know your local state university because they can make you know 68 nanometer microprocessors they're all of a sudden at the top of the economic food chain for the area because no one no one thought to the bomb the big bears but what about (laughs) actual food like that's (laughs) yeah well i think whatever power structure rises up or remains just takes that over (laughs) because those are big buildings Easily defendable, yeah. nice little, yeah, so there's not going to be any higher learning happening there. <laughs> Build a wall on the university. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is the most disappointing story of the week, and I'm going to apologize up front. Because of the paywall, <laughs> we don't even have a picture of these pigs, and that's really the whole story, right? It is. China's breeding giant pigs that are as big and heavy as polar bears. Nothing. Okay. Nothing here. That's really all there is to it. And the picture of the pig would be the big point where it's like, wow, look at those absolute units. 
we don't have one. <laughs> we really should have kept the story, but yeah. we didn't plan. Maybe, so. we, maybe well, we can make the thumbnail. Well, China's got a pork shortage right now. They need about 10 million more tons of pork, and there's just nowhere to get it. I'm sure nothing bad could happen from modifying pigs to be 10 times their normal size. <laughs> Uh, here's a pro criminal tip people love the pro criminal tips now I'm going to give you two and these are they work in concert but they work alone as well if you're going to murder somebody don't film it that's number one hot, hot number tip. two if you can't help yourself and you have to film it don't label the memory card homicide <laughs> a memory card found on the street labeled homicide leads to the arrest of the alleged killer and this is this is a story. I mean, it's it's a, it's terrible, and the person died, and this really did happen, and it's it's awful. But this story ticks pretty much every box of like technology used to apprehend the killer, starting from the memory card. So like the police worked backwards from the memory card. They looked at like where the ho like where the hotel was, because I think that was also labeled. And then they, well, they used his mobile phone ping. Yeah, and and the mobile phone not only pinged at the hotel, but also at the place where the memory card was found and where and the they, body was. The cameras in the parking lot caught his license plate. Yeah, and you know, same car. And the, the vehicle appeared in the video, not the license plate, but the make and model. And so like, there's just, this guy's going away for a long, long time. Probably killed other people too. I gotta think and if he you're he would have gotten it, away with it too. <laughs> you probably don't film your first murder, right? This was Alaska. So. Oh, of course it was. At least it wasn't Alabama this week. Sometimes we include stories just because they are so ridiculous. And this one, to defend the guys that made these, mm. they made it as sort of a statement to how ridiculous it was. <laughs> but then they still sold it. Jesus Shoe, a $3,000 sneaker filled with holy water, has sold out in minutes. The creative label MSCHF, like mischief. Uh, see, that's what they were. It's, they're in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, of course they're in Brooklyn. Where else would they be? So this little reservoir down here is full of water from the Jordan River. I'm sure. Definitely is, not from <laughs> just been consecrated. tap water. Yeah. Uh, this is the Bible verse where Jesus walked on the water. You get this little cross bound into the laces here. And the inside sole is red, which is supposed to mimic the uh, Catholic priest's shoes. I'm oh, sorry, you continue. They made 12 pair, three grand a piece, they're sold out. They, uh, they should have included the verse where Jesus went into the temple when they were selling things they weren't supposed to and started <laughs> whipping people through the streets and turning over the tables. Yeah, so, uh, well, I mean, they were trying to make a statement, I guess, but if you're the person who buys it, do you think that's going to appreciate in value, or are you really into the Hollywood? Uh, the real question is, do you think Kanye bought a pair? <laughs> I think this agency just got its rent through the end of the year in New York, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no way. That's, uh, what, 30 grand? Well, yeah, I guess that might be through the end of the year. <laughs> so, uh, we have a lot of predators online. That's not new. You're gonna say on our forums. We have a lot of predators <laughs> uh, on our forums. <laughs> We've gotten that cleaned up, maybe. They've not been convicted. I'm not saying they're not there, but uh, but it's out there, and it seems like the these predators are actually not viewers of Level One News, right? Because they never take any precaution with their communications. They always get caught because they do something really, really stupid. But in this case. I am going to blame the victim. Yes, the <laughs> victims were the idiots in this case. <laughs> a group of teen girls, what could possibly go wrong, tries to set a trap for an alleged pedophile. One of them ends up being kidnapped. So these girls set up a meeting with this guy in a parking lot because they thought he had been sleeping with underage girls. And they literally were trying to set up a sting. Yeah, and so he drove off with one of them. He was like, no, just get in the car, we'll talk. And then he just drove away. And, uh, and the girl was like, what could go wrong? Yeah, the other girls were like, wait, was that... A that was our friend. <laughs> and, and so they called the police. And the police immediately pulled him over and was like, what are you doing? So it's probably, this is probably a developing story. Uh, I'm sure, like, that was probably scary for those girls. But at the same time, I wonder if they were like, that was technically a success. The police didn't yeah. catch him. And, like, and we had, like, uh, there was a lot of fun. We got our names in the paper. <laughs> yeah, they're doing this again. <laughs> I, I do, I mean, I understand the word alleged has to be used until there's a conviction. But I think it's it's really, like, We've got some solid evidence against this guy. First of all, agreed to meet with teen girls. 
<laughs> Second of all, lured one into his car. And third, Drove abducted. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. They are just like, I'll just give them a little scare. There are YouTube channels. I mean, they might have been banned in the adpocalypse. I haven't seen them for years, but uh, it's guys who just do this all day long. So they uh, disguise their voice or they use the filters or whatever, and then they'll arrange a meeting with a guy, and then they'll just show up and shame him and film it. <laughs> and that's the entire channel content. So, mm. we've been talking about vaping a lot on Level 1 News. God, it's fun to talk Mostly about Mostly just because Ryan <laughs> enjoys baiting people in the comments. But. It's fun because that topic drives engagement, and the <laughs> algorithm mistakenly <laughs> thinks that we should... <laughs> but it just it drives engagement with the vapors, which is not what we want. I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here, right? But this week, it's not about vaping being dangerous inherently, but what can happen when you're in the vape culture. <laughs> Botched vape pod deal in Whole Foods parking lot leads to a kidnapping and gun charges. So a North Andover man was allegedly chased a juvenile and his car and fired a gun at the ground in the Whole Foods parking lot. The dude was arrested. He was trying to sell THC laced vape pods to these kids. The kids tried to take them without paying for them. He may have shot into the ground or he definitely shot into the ground. We don't know. He's been arrested. So <laughs> here's, here's another pro criminal tip. If you're selling vape pods to teens, don't bring a gun. <laughs> well, listen, you got to protect your supply, right? That's a felony. You're going away for a long time. <laughs> yeah, these kids try to run away with the THC vapes, and uh, this guy wasn't having it. <laughs> also, true. in the Whole Foods parking lot, is that the best place? Because you know there's cameras everywhere. Well, it's the only place their parents would drop them off at. So. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I want to go eat that. at the Whole Foods buffet and pick up some vape pods. It's like, those are the things that are killing people. And it is the THC vape pods, too. I mean, yeah. you're taking your life in your hands in two different ways. First of all, <laughs> you're going to get shot with this shady drug dealer that you're trying to rip off. And second of all, your lungs are going to get fried when you get it home. <laughs> so, wow. Reckless. SpongeBob, everybody loves him, right? No. Nope. <laughs> Not everybody. Some people hate him. SpongeBob is a violent racist colonizer, says University of Washington professor. I, it was like, this is how, a hot take. How is he going to get there? And it's actually a very imaginative explanation for <laughs> the residents of uh, Bikini Bottom and like how everything is. And it's it's the guy has a lot of imagination to be able to think up these kinds. Of was it a guy? He really should be writing fan fiction. This is not the guy. Oh, I thought that was the guy. No, no, no. I think it was a woman. Oh. Uh. So here's the the connection. If you're wondering, okay, that seems... Oh, Holly M. Barker. Sorry. That's a big stretch. How do we get there? Well, the first <laughs> connection is Bikini Bottom. And I don't know... Chris and I were talking about this. I don't yeah, know the, the, lore. the canon. Maybe this is true, maybe it's not. But she connects the Bikini Atoll, where we tested our nuclear weapons, with Bikini Bottom. She thinks those are the same places. Except I don't... I mean, I used to watch the show when I was a kid. Like, I don't think... That there's any connection, at least not made in the show. Uh, the residents of Bikini Bottom were also forcibly evicted, which is something she does. Bikini Atoll, not Bikini Bottom. Well, yeah. I was going to say, I don't remember that in any episode. <laughs> <laughs> now, here is my, uh, my take on this. SpongeBob is a sea sponge, is he not? <laughs> well, it's the nuclear fallout that's caused the mutation here. But as a sea sponge, he would be a native. <laughs> <laughs> but he's mutated because sea sponges don't talk and wear pants. But he, but he was born, presumably, <laughs> on the seafloor in this area. His right? parents are in the show. Yeah, they. <laughs> Listen, so. his existence is pain and misery, which is entirely our fault. If there no, is, <laughs> if there is one invader, it's the squirrel, right? Yes, she's from Texas. <laughs> But I don't think SpongeBob himself and his friend is a starfish, right? And then there's the squid and the crab. These are all sea creatures. They're so I think native. I think that her her fan fiction is clearly AU, <laughs> alternate universe. Like it's not it's okay. Not canon. Let's take it a step further. Then she says it's whitewashing of American military activities. Do we know that SpongeBob is white? He's a sponge. Oh, it's white. She might mean whitewashing in that. This, like it's not that bad, yeah. This array of mutated creatures is actually a good thing 
from the rate. Oh, so yeah, it's it, not ra- it's not a racial term. Is it canon it's that these are mutated creatures? No, no, it's not. It's literally like, I, again, I don't think there's any connection to the, the atoll that they're talking about, and it's literally just sea creatures. There were two things I was thinking as reading this: is like one, for God's sakes, nobody introduced this professor to any of the writings or artwork of H.R. Geiger, and uh, for another one, what about things like? Uh, gummy bears or David the Gnome or any of the other cartoons like how would you explain those gummy bears <laughs> is, there, is, there, was, is there a universe for gum, gum, gummy bears is there a gummy bear cartoon yeah it was literally created by the candy company to I love that picture of the gummy bears in comparison to the gummy worms and it was like when you compare the sizes of these it paints a horrifying but picture of the gummy universe they were the, the, the gummy bear cartoon was kind of like uh, true value care bears oh <laughs> Faded glory. So anyway, yeah, um, I don't know. It seems like a quite a, a bit of a stretch. I think Bikini Bottom is just a fun name they came up with. Yeah. yeah. Well, because um, there's another one that's like something top. I think. Oh no, it's, maybe it's Rock Bottom. There's another town that they visit. It's on the deep sea floor. Well, I bet it's. I bet there's some like embedded hate and racism in that. We just so <laughs> there. There's a joke in that episode where like. SpongeBob's trying to go to the bathroom, but like all the sea creatures on that part of the the seafloor are very strange. And he's like, I don't even know which bathroom to go into. And this was years ago, <laughs> like years before any of like that whole movement started. So I'm sure some people have been offended by that. That's like, uh, there's a staggering amount of predictions that the Simpsons made, including Trump <laughs> as president. Also the Lisa as uh, the angry 12 year old at oh, Trump. As Greta. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, the cartoons, they always get it right. <laughs> the family guy p- predicted Osama Bin Laden. Well, but that one was kind of <laughs> easy to do. I mean, he, he was well known. Chris, what's your favorite Overwatch team? Uh, I don't really watch Overwatch League, but I would probably say, I don't know, the Shanghai Dragons because they're the underdog and they also have Gaguri. Well, and yet you have no support for the people of Hong Kong. Yes. Yeah, well that, I bet those are mainland China, aren't they? Wow, Chris. <laughs> it's Shanghai, yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Well, uh, will you be buying a jersey? No, I don't I don't care enough about it. Mm-hmm. I don't even watch the games, but if I had to pick a team, that's probably who I'd pick. So and then my final question, and this is the biggest question, how great is this logo? <laughs> I actually I've had some people say that it I've it looks kinda like a uterus, but <laughs> Well, yeah. A little, yeah. Okay. The eggs are a little sharp. Yeah, just a little. Headline. Oh, sorry. School bans Houston, Houston Outlaws Overwatch League jersey for promoting violence because there are technically guns in the logo. Now, are those guns that one of the characters actually uses? Yes, they absolutely are. Uh, yeah, it could be considered like McCree's gun. I yeah. mean, every model is different, right? Every skin. Yeah. But yeah, those do seem like, you know, West guns. Well, yeah, it's, it's for Houston, the city of Houston, so. So yeah, kid wore that school. Nope. And was sent home... Because those are guns. And he only wore the jersey because it was like a school spirit week. And one of the things was team like... Team week. It was, no, it was team day. Our so team, like each okay. day has a different theme. And this one was like sports team day. So he wore his favorite sports team and got in trouble. Do you think people who wore like Redskin logos to... <laughs> think they got in trouble? Or was it just this guy? Uh, you know what? I bet there is a lot more chance of gun violence for the Redskins team than there is for the <laughs> Houston Outlaws team. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it is, that's a sad state of affairs that we live in. Also, I mean, it's a video game where almost everybody has a gun. Yeah. So. Uh. These are some sort of futuristic space pistols, though. So. Maybe maybe the teacher was upset because they got fan the hammered one too many times. <laughs> she got stunned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we've talked on and on about Musk and his pedo guy controversy and it amazes me that it just keeps getting more and more outrageous as more facts are uncovered. I mean, what a stupid thing he did. <laughs> Elon Musk pressured Thai officials to say nice things about his mini subs in the midst of a deadly rescue mission. This ongoing case with the uh, <laughs> the guy that he accused of being a pedo is just going to be an endless series of, of gold nuggets for the next few weeks. Uh, he should have paid. <laughs> yeah, It's just astounding that it's like there are lives in the balance and you're more concerned about <laughs> good PR for your company. So this is about him getting his underlings to go to the Thai government 
and try and hassle them into making press releases about what a great guy he is and how smart he is for coming up with his stupid sub while they were trying to rescue the cave boys. Uh, Which they did successfully, not with the help of right. Elon Musk. Including the scammer that he hired as like the ex-Navy SEAL guy who was none of those things. Yeah. So it's just there's so many layers to this. I think that I think that would have been like he doesn't need this elaborate defense. I mean, this talks about how like he's sort of trying to claim every possible defense. I think that Elon Musk should have just gone for the I hired a felon as a PR guy. He told me all this stuff. I didn't know. I my me a culpa, my bad. But this guy's the guy that, that that told me all this stuff. He he should have done that. Yeah, but, but all of his didn't. tweets. Yeah. I mean I think he should write a check. Yeah, that's going to be the least painful thing. Although he would have to admit he's wrong. And yeah. that is the most painful thing. Yeah. yeah. So he would rather uh, fight this in court. I like I like what he's doing in some cases, but I mean, really think about this man's going to take us to the stars. <laughs> this man's going to take us to the stars. <laughs> Fail fast and make that guy that wanted to help those kids a millionaire. So uh, it's probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> he did help those kids. His knowledge of the cave system helped them actually figure out how to get into where they were. I think we've talked about this before, but it's truly the darkest timeline is where Musk pays this guy off, and this guy uses that money to buy a lady boy. <laughs> <laughs> he has a girlfriend. Uh, Listen, if this if this universe were were like you, Musk is going to make you a millionaire, but he's going to publicly like make fun of you or like say terrible things about you. I could. That's I'm fine with that. You would do that? Yeah, probably. I let him call me a pedo for a million. Yeah. Hell yeah. What do I care? Tweet me all day, Elon. Bring it. <laughs> uh, we have. It's been a while since we had a challenge. What was the last one? Was it the hot water? No. The thing that I didn't understand about the story was the the uh, Chewbacca costume. Yeah, that makes no sense. Well, he's just an idiot. You know. I mean, look at him. Look at this moron. <laughs> Michigan boy suffers second degree burns in fire challenge. Uh, the fire challenge is you set yourself on fire. And see how long well, you can you, deal with it. Oh, you've, yeah, you've seen people like they'll dip their finger in uh, an alcohol-based fuel <laughs> and then light it, and then you don't feel it as long as the alcohol is burning because it's that. Uh, what's the effect where the light and frost? Yeah, where the uh, evaporation mm. creates a shield between you and your. So they actually did it successfully one time, and of course, after you do it successfully, what do you do next? <laughs> you have to do it again and again. Well, no, you step it up. So apparently whoever was operating the spray bottle filled with the alcohol just kept spraying. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Uh. And it resulted in some second degree burns. I feel like this is something like my husband might have done as a child. Because <laughs> like he, he casually mentioned to me once they like set a dumpster on fire. And I was like, what? Well, that's He's like, it was fine. We got it out. And I was like, but... Who was supposed to be? He's like, oh, my mom just let me run around in the neighborhood. We just set a dumpster on fire. Like, Oops. Yeah. Uh. Although, what he didn't have was the audience, right? Because these guys are putting it on YouTube and streaming it. And stuff Did they like record that. it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, the algorithm wow. loves content like this. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. Especially if you're in a stupid Chewbacca costume. The algorithm is literally like, look, if you want to make $1,000 off of YouTube this month, you're just going to have to set yourself on fire. This but, image does like, say 1000 But the, you can't get monetized before you do the challenge so you got to do one challenge to get up there to get monetized then you got to top it with another challenge that's the thing youtube's like the reverse spider-man the first one's free everybody gets one i don't know well it's the first taste is always free <laughs> so yeah don't set yourselves on fire yeah. pro tip unless you're protesting the chinese government is don't that, set yourself on fire what kind of pro tip is that like pro life tip pro i don't even know i don't know this Common is one of the sense. darkest stories we've ever done. And it just goes to show you how weird and creepy things get in this world. And how you always have to protect yourself, even when you're not thinking about it. Uh, obsessed fan finds Japanese idol's home by zooming in on her eyes. And we would laugh if this was just like weird creepiness. But no, dude actually assaulted her. Yeah, like he waited for her, found her, and assaulted her. I think they have... Uh, yeah, yeah. So here he is, creeping in her building, waiting for her. So, I don't know if this was the picture, but she, she tweeted, I think it was, she tweeted this picture. In the reflection of one of her eyes, there is a bus stop. This guy recognized the bus stop. But wait, 
There's more. He measured the angle of the shadows to determine which floor she's on in her building. Wow. Yeah. And he was waiting for her when she got home and assaulted her. <laughs> so pro tip, don't do that if you're into those kind of things. I don't know. I don't you're know. Posting on social media. Maybe yeah, just is. send him like a tweet and it's like, hey, I really enjoy your work and then just leave it at that. <laughs> oh no, he's talking about you're talking about the girl, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh the other thing is, I think this guy had tried to make con- contact with her, and she went to the authorities, and they were like, eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> well, it turns out there was something to worry about. <laughs> as a, I thought this was actually, there was, there was another story like this this week, although not as bad, and it was a uh, bathwater gamer girl. Somebody, she had a party, and somebody stole her hamster, and she was arrested because she figured out who it was and went to get it oh, back. I saw that picture. I didn't realize that was her. Yeah. It was like... Uh, Give my hamster back, you bitch, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one was funnier. We should have included that it one. It had a Pepe on it. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah that's... Uh, I think she's much more clever than her online pictures would, would lead you to believe. But, so it turns out that this girl was uh, one of those, uh, not K-pop, but what do they call the Japanese ones? J-pop. Is it J-pop? Yeah. Um, there is a support group. For J-pop and ex-J-pop girls, because they get stalked so hard in wow. Japan. Yeah. Dark. It's ridiculous that she went to the police and they still didn't do anything. Like, mm. yeah, the police were probably like, "Nah, I wouldn't worry." I mean, he would have to like get the information from your eyes and the angle of the sun. <laughs> He's never gonna do that. <laughs> Don't worry. He probably has a job and other <laughs> healthy hobbies that he occupies his time with. She was at least able to defend herself, which is good. So there's there's a tiny ray of, of happy ending there. Yeah. Well, the that kind of man might not have the physical prowess for proper <laughs> assaulting. That's, I guess, a silver lining. This is my favorite story, maybe of the year. It's got nothing to do with technology, but God, just the picture of this guy. Well, and the CCTV. Yeah. Wait till wait till you see the picture of this cat. <laughs> The headline is, male cat needs a glucose drip after mating with five females in one night at the pet hotel. Now, the pet, employ- the pet hotel employees were really quick to point out that Look how happy. <laughs> the CCTV camera. He's such a good kitty. They only saw five instances on the CCTV camera. There may have been more. <laughs> Look how fat he is. He's oh, exhausted. I love him. <laughs> Who's a pudgy boy? It's him. So, this guy went to, uh, he was boarded because the, the owner went on vacation. He is a purebred Russian blue. He is not fixed because he is a purebred. That's a valuable set of testicles right there. <laughs> <laughs> and, now the owner claims that they told the boarder like, hey, look, he's not fixed. Take precautions. <laughs> the precautions were not taken. <laughs> Now, some of these female cats were also not fixed, so there was a big dust up. It's like, who's responsible here, right? (laughs) The boarders blamed the guy for not telling them. He says he did. He blames them for letting the cat loose. The female cat owners are blaming everybody (laughs) because, uh. (laughs) But fortunately, there was CCTV footage of the incident, so, you know, it can work itself out that way. So. Here's, I, I don't quite understand this, but it seems like the female cat owners have agreed they will pay the sum of like, what, $200 or one kitten if there happened to be a conception here because his seed is so valuable. It's a stud oh, wow. feed. And they will have those purebred <laughs> Russian blue babies. <laughs> oh, God, look at him. He's so happy. <laughs> I feel like the kitten- He would be cute even without the funny story. Like, look how just chubby he is. <laughs> I feel like the Kitten Academy needs to set up a new room in their house. Yeah, well, they, when you graduate from the Kitten Academy, you lose your testicles. <laughs> but yeah, poor guy was exhausted. Needed a little little pick-me-up. <laughs> a glucose trip. expending himself all night. <laughs> I mean, like, imagine you're that cat, and you have to go back to the normal world of just living in that house. It's like, hey, bro, when are we going to do that one thing again? Well, I was going to say, every... I actually like for the the pet owner it's like oh I need to board my cat this weekend and the cat's like ready to go it, like runs into yeah. the carrier he, he brings out the kitty carrier and the cat's like yep I'm ready again hey pick up some glucose <laughs> I'm going for eight this time I've been training uh, 
that's it for this week. <laughs>